accountability of the national process with full cognizance of the human rights principles. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank you, Excellency. I will now give the floor to distinguished ambassador Thailand. Mr. President, Thailand appreciates the efforts made by the main sponsor to find common ground on the draft resolution now tabled before us and to accommodate the concerns of all sides. We, however, remain concerned that important elements of the draft are based upon the report of the OHCHR, which seems to have gone beyond the mandate given to it in Resolution 19.2. We are therefore not in position to support the draft resolution and will have to vote against it. Our decision has also taken into account the fact that progress has been and continues to be made in the reconciliation process in Sri Lanka. This process is continuing with the government of Sri Lanka implementing many recommendations of the LLRC. Given the nature of what the country has been through, this though will take time, and the international community should support Sri Lanka in its efforts. Furthermore, we believe the government of Sri Lanka has been sincere in its engagement with the Council, having, among other things, received an OHCHR technical mission and taken part constructively in the UPR process. We therefore urge Sri Lanka to continue to take concrete steps to implement the recommendations of the LLRC, particularly to ensure accountability and combat impunity. Additionally, we urge Sri Lanka to revisit recommendations of the LLRC, which has not yet been included in this National Plan of Action. Thailand also hopes that the High Commissioner will be able to visit Sri Lanka at the earliest opportunity to assess the situation on the ground and that appropriate advice and technical assistance be provided to Sri Lanka. With the consent of and in close consultation with the government of Sri Lanka, so as to have a genuine impact on the ground in the interest of its people. Thank you. I thank you, Excellency. I will now give the floor to the distinguished ambassador of Korea. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, the Republic of Korea uh, note with appreciation uh, of the efforts and uh, achievements made by the government of the Sri Lanka in the areas of rebuilding infrastructure, demining, resetting internally dispersed persons, and then rehabilitation of the child soldiers, even in the midst of the difficult situation following the civil war. The Republic of Korea, which has unique experiences of colonialization and three year long the Korean War, and then uh, the democratization uh, process, well understands not only the importance of the accountability for genuine reconciliation, but also the considerable difficulties faced in the process of ensuring accountability. The Korean government appreciates the efforts by the government of the Sri Lanka in setting up the lessons learned and the reconciliation commission and establishing the action plan to implement the recommendations of the LLRC despite inherent difficulties. The Republic of Korea also appreciates the fact that the government of Sri Lanka has continued to express its commitments to faithfully implement the recommendations of LLRC and has shared information relating to the action plan with the international community. In this regard, we welcome the recent announcement made by the government of Sri Lanka on its plan to hold elections in northern province, as well as its willingness to receive special procedures following the visit of the High Commissioner for Human Rights to Sri Lanka this year. Mr. President, in conclusion, the government respects the ownership role of the government of Sri Lanka in promoting national reconciliation and accountability. The Republic of Korea earnestly hopes that United Nations human rights mechanisms shall play their, their role in providing necessary support and assistance in this process. The Korea will vote in favor for this resolution. I thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. I will now give the floor to the distinguished ambassador of Japan. Thank you, Mr. President. Japan attaches importance to the promotion of human rights and the fundamental freedoms as universal values, 
and emphasizes the importance of constructive and effective discussions in the Human Rights Council for the improvement of human rights situations in the inter international community. In order to promote the efforts towards national reconciliation being taken by Sri Lanka, Japan took part in the negotiation process on this resolution in a constructive manner. Regarding national reconstruction and reconciliation in Sri Lanka, we welcome certain progress made to date toward rebuilding infrastructure, economic development, and resettlement of, of IDPs. At the same time, we need to recognize that many challenges still remain. In this context, the international community, including Japan, is paying close attention to Sri Lanka's efforts to ser seriously address these challenges. Mr. President, Japan has been calling on the government of Sri Lanka in the bilateral context to take steady and concrete steps as its own initiative to address its human rights challenges. During his visit to Japan last week, Sri Lankan President Rajapaksa expressed his strong commitment to holding an election for the Provincial Council of the Northern Province by September this year, holding inclusive dialogue among all the political parties within the Parliamentary Select Committee, and ensuring the necessary response to human rights issues as well as the issue of accountability. Japan encourages Sri Lanka to make the utmost efforts to continue to cooperate with the international community. Japan also strongly urges Sri Lanka to steadily implement, with a concrete timeline, effective measures to address various challenges, including the realization of its commitments made during the recent Japan-Sri Lanka summit meeting, in order to achieve improvement of its human rights situations and national reconciliation, including on the issue of accountability, in a prompt manner. For the aforementioned reasons, Japan will abstain from the vote on this resolution. Thank you. I thank you, Excellency. There are other members who wish to make explanation of vote before the vote. No? no? Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the delegation of Pakistan, the Council will now proceed to a recorded vote on the draft proposal L.1-2022. I now ask the Secretariat to open the voting machine, and I request all delegations to register their vote. Have all delegations registered? I request delegations to check whether their vote is accurately reflected on the screen. If so, I ask the Secretariat to close the voting machine. The voting is now closed. The results of the recorded votes are as follows. 25 in favor, 13 against, 8 abstentions. Draft proposal L.1 slash revision 1 
is therefore adopted. Copies of the results of the votes will shortly be distributed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Council will now consider draft proposal H A slash H R C slash twenty two slash L dot seventeen entitled Composition of the Staff of the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights.